so we have already created the app okay room reservation app it's already ready now uh, all that we have to do is uh, you know we have to put a few more functionalities onto it so first thing that we are going to learn is a field dependency okay what's the field dependency making one field dependent on the other one all right so let's say um, uh let's say uh, for example uh, in this case i have rooms all right so for the rooms let's say i have types okay and uh, in type let's say uh, i have type a b and c type rooms all right another thing uh, i need to uh, enter into it is uh, the number of people it can accommodate this call it number how many people it can accommodate all right and this for this let's say there is an option 1 2 you did refer to max occupancy max occupancy how do you know this terminology so well Did you do some research? No, I am a hotel management graduate to start with. Before okay. I did my BCom and postgraduate diploma. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So uh, let's say max occupancy is the, this is the option, you know, six, seven. All right. So type we have already defined. Let uh, let me just go ahead and define this max occupancy. So for that, all that we need to do is just go to setup, create, and go to the uh, rooms object. Uh, room is the one that I created, right? Yep, the one that says for book it is the one that I created, so that way you can differentiate. Got it. Um, all right. Now it has to be a pick list. So now for the rooms, I have two fields. One is uh, the type, and one is the max occupancy. Okay. Now you can select any type, type A, type B, type C, and you can have these uh, options for the max occupancy. Now, <clears throat> let's say I have a now you know uh, I have a criteria that for type A, occupancy options are only one, two, and three. Or maybe one, two, and four. Okay. For type B, occupancy options are one, two, four, and six. And for type C, the occupancy options are, let's say, three, five, seven, eight, nine. And ten. All right. This can be a possibility, right? So I do not have all the occupancy options available for all the uh, room types. In that case, what you can do is you can just go ahead and define a dependency. Now, what is happening? No matter you select A, 
or B or C, you get to see all the occupancy options. But let's say, uh, you know, uh, occupying, you know, occupancy for one person is available only for type A rooms. Right. All right. So that's basically the thing. That's where I would need to put a dependency. So what I will need to do is I need to make this max occupancy field dependent on type. Correct. So how do you do that? It's pretty simple. Just go to that object. Same setup, create objects and then go to the room object. And then click on field dependencies here. Click on new. Controlling field and dependent field. So which one is controlling field for us? The room type, right? Type is the controlling field. Which is the dependent field? Occupants. Occupants. That's it. And here is the dependency that we can define. So under type A, which all occupancy options are available, you just have to select. So for type A, I say 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, sorry, 1, 2. You have to press a control to select multiple options. Okay. For type B, 1, 2, 4, and 6. 1, 2, 4, and 6. For type C, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9. 10. Okay, so whichever option is available or applicable under the you know uh, parent option, you just have to define that or select that rather by pressing Control, and you just say include values. Now only these values, the ones that you see in uh, the yellow shade, these values will be available under Type A. Only these ones will be available under Type B, and these ones will be available under type C okay so we have already defined our dependency for the field now let's go and uh, okay all that you need to do is just save it now let's go to the record and check it how does it look sorry to interrupt uh, mm -hmm. am I heard now yeah, yeah I can hear you now okay See, now we have made this field max occupancy dependent on type. So if it's a type A room, then occupancy options are only three. If it's a type B room, occupancy options are one, two, four, six. If it's a type C room, then the occupancy options are these. Got it? So while you're making a field dependent, you also uh, you can also make the field dependent based on um, a checkbox okay so controlling field can be checkbox also okay let's say I have one more dependency um, I have accessible rooms only with type A and B okay there are no accessible rooms uh, with type C so in that case what I'm doing is I'm defining another dependency that's for uh, accessibility and accessibility and uh, type in this case type is going to be a dependent field okay which depends on accessibility okay. so you can just go and say set up since we have the checkbox I'm trying to use that let's go to the room new field dependency controlling field will be accessible dependent field will be tied go to continue so for that checkbox checked only options available will be a b and if it's unchecked then all three options should be available That's it. 
Sí. Let's control and build values and... You need to include the values first. Yep. That's it. Now, if it is checked, you will only see type A and B. Now select type A, number of things. Got it? So that's how the field dependency works. We're okay on this? All right. So that's one thing. Now the other thing that we are going to do is uh, we will uh, For the reservation number, because we have an object called reservation, right? Uh, when you go to reservation and then you try to create a reservation, it asks you for reservation ID, right? So now this reservation ID or anything like this, because the reservation ID has to be unique, okay? And there is no such name that you can give to it. All right? so it has to be a unique number. And uh, it's difficult for me to actually, you know, go and put some number here. You do not know, you know what was the last reservation made. So in this kind of a situation, we use a functionality which is called an auto number. Auto number is also a field type. Okay. Uh, using the auto number, what you will do is you will just uh, convert this field into an auto uh, number and that what happens is the number is automatically populated okay the number will be automatically generated okay you can define the format is that unique for the app or is it unique for that user for that object okay got it okay so the first record which gets created will have let's say 001 the second one will have 002003 that is all right so Salesforce will automatically take care of creating a unique ID for every record. Okay, so that can be your reservation ID, let's say. You can define the format. So how do you do that? You can create an auto number field. Um, so you just need to go to setup, create objects. So like for customer, let's say I want to create it for customer. I already have customer uh, name, email, phone. I want to create a field called customer ID. So I can just go to uh, the new and say auto number. So auto number is the field. A system generated sequence number that uses a display format you define. So you have the option of defining the display format and it will be a system generated number. That means it will pick up the number automatically uh, start starting from whatever start number you give so let's say i want to have a customer id so put a field in. customer id now you have to put the display format okay so in the display format there are two things you know for an auto number one is the static part and one is the dynamic part what is static part? Static part is whatever is going to be fixed. Okay. Let's say I want to have my customer ID like this or like this. Okay. 
so this this is the dynamic part and this is the static part correct this is going to be fixed for all the ids this part the 001 will keep on changing so what you can do is you can just define this this part you have to keep outside the curly brackets and this dynamic part you have to put inside the curly bracket that's it so you should do that's it and the format because you are not defining any number here the format needs to be given in 000 that's it if you want four digit make four zeros if you want five digit make five zeros whatever you can put two or three digits okay that's it start number from which number you want to start i want to start from one all right do you want to generate auto number for existing records so that the records which are already there do you want to generate auto number for them also yes click on next Safe. Okay. Now you can go to customers and check for the customer ID. See, it's already generated the customer ID zero zero one. Create one more customer. Shiva customer ID is 002. For our name, it's 003. Got it? So this is how it works. So that's about the auto number. Here, so we have talked about uh, you know putting the field dependencies and the auto numbers uh, on this. Now, more or less, you know we can actually control a lot of functionalities using these options, right? The field types and all. Okay. Uh, now there is another type of uh, relationship. The other day we talked about lookup relationship. Right. There is one more type of relationship field which is called master detail relationship but this is a special type of relationship. Okay. So master detail relationship is a special type of relationship. I would initially suggest you to just work with the lookup relationship for a, you know maybe for a few more uh, uh, work on it, uh, work with it a few more times and then get into the concept of master detail relationship. It is the same as the lookup relationship connection happens exactly the same way just that uh, you know some master detail relationship has a few additional features okay and it's a special type of relationship so let's not get into that right now we will uh, talk about this a little later before that i want you to be okay with the lookup relationship the relationship concept itself okay so that's there mm, formula we will do a little later Formula thing also we are going to do a little later. What uh, else do you think we can actually do on this app? Uh, in terms of, you know, do, do you want to add a few fields or something onto this? Any small thing which needs to be done here? Um, hmm. If you can just go into the other app that I just made. Mm -hmm. And that question, like how we did the dependency field dependency. I want to see how I could go back and correct that part. Um, Which one? Yes, bookings. Uh, yeah, pick that reservation. Hmm. 
-hmm. Right, and then um, so the question where I have see the nightly price, right? That's a part of a formula, which is your total price, I guess. Mm -hmm. And but how do I how how would the system know what the price actually is? Can we make can we auto populate that field from what it was in room? Yes, we can. Meaning what I'm what I'm saying is basically if I do a lookup, right? How do I point it to a specific field of a record? Okay, that's a good question. So there are two parts to this question. Can we populate? Yes, we can populate, but for that we will uh, use formula. So uh, we will talk about formulas a little later because you know formula is going to be a complete uh, topic. Uh, where you sure. need to spend time. So uh, one, uh, let's not get into the formula now. Second part of that is that how do I, uh, you know, uh, point to a specific field using lookup? Okay, let's understand this. Uh, let's let's just you know, let's try to understand how the database is actually working in the backend. Sure. Okay. Let's say I have a table here which is called room. Okay, so the room will have an ID, name or number, room number, price, type, and uh, let's say accessibility. Well, I think we had a floor also built into that. Right? Maybe the floor, okay, something. All right. So let's say this is what we have. Hmm? Now I have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And this can be a one zero one, B two zero one, C three zero one, D four zero one. Um, this is the room numbers, right? Price can be let's say 10, 20, 10, 10, 20. Type can be B, A, B, C. And the floors can also be whatever. That's how the data is stored in the rooms table, okay? Right. Out of all these, which one is the unique field? The ID. Okay, so there has to be uh, one unique field, okay, in every object. That's what we understand. Salesforce by default has a field called ID. Every object has an ID field also. Let's understand that part now. Uh, though it's not displayed, but every object has an ID field, and every record you create gets an ID. So, if you just go to booking record that you have created, mm -hmm. you will see that in the URL after salespost.com there is an ID. So, this is the unique ID for this record. Now, this is a very important concept that you need to understand. So, Salesforce by default populates an ID, there is an ID field for every object which is by default created. You don't have to create that. It's already there and uh, Salesforce uh, creates that for every object. Okay. And that's for the record, right? That's for the record. That ID. Okay. So every record gets an ID, right? So whether you create an ID or not for the guest or room or the booking or whatever object you are uh, creating, Salesforce will definitely maintain an ID. Why does it need to do that? Because it needs to differentiate between the data that you have created. So right. if you, if you do not know understand the uh, if you do not understand the uh, database concepts, and if you have not created the ID, Salesforce still needs to you know differentiate between four uh, different records that you have created in an object, right? So for that reason, they uh, from their side they maintain this ID thing, okay? And it's not displayed here. You do not get to see the ID field here. 
okay you can display it here using some uh, you know a, a bit of coding and all but usually it's not shown here because it's not relevant to what you are actually doing it's relevant to what salesforce is doing so this is displayed here so whichever record you open the id is passed here <clears throat> and that's database concept actually in case you have database uh, and you have uh, records and you want to refer to a uh, certain record at any given point of time you need to have an id okay so that's already there okay so salesforce is has the id record? yeah uh, is the id created only for uh... A record or is it created for object also? See, ID is a field on the object and it will be generated for every record. Okay. So ID is a field, like name is a field, um, okay. room type is a field, the same way ID is also a field on the object. Okay. okay. And every object, uh, sorry, every record will have an ID for it. Okay. Got it? Now, by default, Salesforce refers to that ID field as a unique identifier. Even if you create one more ID field from yourself, Salesforce is going to uh, depend on the ID field that it has uh, created, on the Salesforce has, okay? And that field is called ID, this is what it is called. Okay. Now, come back to the second one. So we have understood the structure of the room uh, object. Now let's come to the reservation pattern. In the reservation, I will have a reservation ID, let's say, and then I will have, uh, let's say, check-in date and check-out date. Sorry, check-in date, check-out date, and room for which room the reservation has been made, right? Now, here. This is just a field, right? This is also a field, right? It only has a cell. But this is a lookup field, which means, uh, you know, sometimes in database concept, we call it a foreign key. Okay, so it, in this, I need to put a value so that it can understand that it's related to which record from the room. So here, which field's value from room should go? I want to reference the room uh, here. Which field from room uh, should I really go? To? The number, right? The number? Yeah. Or the okay. ID? Let me put it this way. This is unique. This is not unique. Let's say I have two A one zero one. It's not unique. Got it. Got it. So if you populate A101 here, then will it not get confused that which is record to relate to? Yeah. Fine. So this lookup field or the relationship field always need to refer back to the ID. Okay. Okay. So if I actually create a lookup field and you know populate the price here then life becomes even more difficult for it. Sure. So it does not understand what to do now. Which yeah. one is it actually getting connected to? But ID is unique. One record can have one ID. Like if, it, if I say ID 3, now there is only one record with ID as 3. Now it's very, very clear on, okay, fine. This is the record which I'm connected to. Yeah. Got it? So it's more like, <clears throat> just try and understand this. Um, your uh, in in your office when you're working when you join a company uh, your i card may display your name your manager will call you with your uh, name but uh, you know when the finance guy needs to process the payrolls he will definitely do it with the employee id because two people can have the same name and uh, their salaries can be different so he does not want to get into that problem, right so identifier is like that all right now Connection between two objects that are the lookup field always gets connected to the ID. However, it displays the name in the front. So you must have seen that it shows the name in the front or the name and number in the in, in the front side, but it's basically connected to the ID. 
Okay, so we cannot connect it. Uh, we cannot create a lookup relationship with any other field. It only gets connected through the ID, and the name is displayed. And that's the standard setting that's there. Now, once I have created this thing, once this relationship has been set, next what I can do is I can just go to the price or whatever nightly charge. Now you can go here and you can use a formula to reference to this particular record and fetch the price from there. But that has to be a formula field. That cannot be a lookup field. Question, Jit. Hmm. So when you mentioned the record or uh, record ID in under the room, right? Mm -hmm. So what if the display has to show as a A101 or whatever the case might be? Whenever so okay, lookup relationship will all always get connected through the ID Salesforce ID field and it will on, always display the name field. When you create a custom object, every object has a name field also, right? ID field every object has and name field every object has. So sure, you, yes, that, that's right. Uh, if you see this in your any of the object, you must have seen that there is a default name field. Right, I saw that, yes. Yes. So it will always display the name there and it will be connected through the ID. Okay. Got it. And there's something that we cannot actually uh, change. Okay. Now, but it's those displaying the name here, it actually is not basically getting connected to the uh, name. It's connected to the ID only. Right. Okay. Now, is the name also auto populated or is it something that we have to populate or we can't it, populate? Name is auto populated. Name is auto populated means uh, auto generated name? Yes. No, no, name is what you can give. Name is what okay. you can give. But it's there and it's a mandatory key. You always have to make sure that you are giving the name. All right, so your lookup field in the front end will display the name. And like if you go to a certain booking, booking so it will show Arya Kaluri. Okay, which is a record in the guests. Okay. Yep. It's actually connecting through the ID of that record. Okay. So it will show the customer name. See, here Arya Kalur is the name now. Sure. So it displays the name in the front and it uh, is actually connected to the ID of the record. So that's the concept here. Jeet, question. Uh -huh. uh, in the lookup uh, pop up, uh, can we um, have other field in place of name? There, in this pop-up? Like, uh, you said that in the front end it always shows um, name instead of ID. Mm -hmm. So, I do not, uh, could you demonstrate with an example? Like, See. Jeet, in this specific record, isn't it the reservation name that you are referring to? See, this is the customer. What is the customer name? Okay. Arya Kaluri, right? Yep. yep. This is a, rev a reservation. Here, this name is a lookup field, okay? So okay. it's showing the name of the customer here. Got it? Connection is with what? Connection is with ID, right? Yeah. Connection is with ID. But it is showing the name of that record. ID of that record is this. This is the ID of the record. Okay. So this is the ID of the record. And this is the name of the record. Okay. Now what happens here is you are basically connected to this, but in the front end it displays this, right? It's like you know if uh, you know someone has created a uh, link and uh, it says Wikipedia.com, let's say, and or Wikipedia or something, but it actually connects to let's say www.wikipedia.com. 
you have seen this kind of links right in real life correct so it shows something and you know when you click it does not have to go to that thing okay so that's how it is that's how this link is created the link actually the display is the name but it's actually connected to the id of the record what the logic and it will always be the name in the front end and it will always be connected to the id that's how it has been built clear arvin you had some question yeah no so in this case in this reservation right mm -hmm. as you just mentioned that it is linked to the id but the name is a rare category mm -hmm. so when you look at the booking the way it says reservation name mm -hmm. Is this the name that was the created? The name you can change and you can make it anything. Okay. Doesn't matter. Got it. This will still be continue to be the customer name. Okay. So that's how it is. All right. So that's about uh, the lookup relationship. Yeah, uh, how it works. All right. Uh, and it will be more clear. You know the concept. That's the reason why I did not want you to get into the master detail relationship right now. Uh, these concepts will, you know, keep on becoming more clear uh, as in, uh, as in, you, you know, keep on creating more lookups and all. We'll start understanding this a little better. Okay. Right.